The current success of the aquaculture sector in New Zealand is based largely on three species, greenshell mussel, Pacific oyster and king salmon. Plant and food research scientists have been working on breeding and domesticating alternative fish species, such as snapper and trevally, to create aquaculture ready options for the New Zealand industry. Plant and food research has been holding finfish species for over 20 years now and we have been um, focusing a lot on snapper and we have been breeding the species for a little bit over 10 years now. Snapper is an obvious candidate, it's an iconic species, um, it's of commercial, recreational and cultural significance and it was a success story right from the start. So when we brought snapper into our hatchery they spawned already in the first year of captivity and they have done so ever since. And we are now in a situation where we can produce a surplus of larvae every year. So that has given us ample access to larvae, juveniles and also we were able to develop a broodstock. So over those 10 years we have actually bred a three generation pedigree of snapper and we have studied its behaviour, life requirements, its health and more recently also the genetics. For a snapper we are thinking that maybe in five to ten years we are in a situation where we can have an aquaculture ready species that has a superior growth rate to what we are having now. A major roadblock when you work on new species is always to develop systems that can hold and rear food stock. And so this is the first thing that we are focusing on. So with the Precision Seafood Harvesting Program, we have access to new brood stock and we get um, new species coming into our hatchery. And we are currently working on a number of them. Trevally is one of them. Um, and then the first thing is that we are trying to establish is, can we spawn them and can we um, you know, work on the larvae, can we get them to grow into juveniles, what are their requirements, what are their feed needs and so on. So we just take it step by step. And with Trevally we have successfully established a broodstock now that we have spawned and the juveniles from this broodstock are now one year old. We have been anesthetizing Trevally to move them from one tank to the other and we use the opportunity to grade them so to remove the small growing ones and so on and at the same time we are also taking fin clip samples from these fin clip samples we are extracting DNA for genetic analysis and this allows us to establish who has sired who in our broodstock population. We are also taking images of each fish and from these images we are extracting information about how well they are growing, what their morphology is like, what their color is like and so on. And these images are then stored in a database so we can look back at them later on. And so we develop a time series of images of our hatchery reared individuals. Snapper spawn for around three months over the New Zealand summer and we have our brood stalks in um, specially designed tanks. They get a diet that allows them to produce very good healthy eggs. We then collect the eggs on a daily basis and for a number of days we will collect eggs to maximize genetic diversity and then we will rear them. Our hatchery staff, they will monitor the larvae very closely on a day-to-day -day basis. For instance, they will capture larvae from our larva rearing tanks every day, bring them in to look at them under the microscope to check has the swim bladder fully inflated, is their gut full with food, um, are they growing good, are there any deformities and so on. So they're checking that on a daily basis to make sure they're really healthy, good growing fish. When we look at our larvae, we can actually see a threefold size difference. And that is a good thing because it suggests that there is an underlying genetic potential for growth that we can select on. And there are actually two indicators that also suggest that selection on enhanced growth rate would be highly likely. The first one is that um, countries like Japan have already more than doubled the growth rates of species closely related to snapper using a breeding approach and also several countries um, around the Mediterranean have increased the growth rate of species closely related to snapper. 
For Snapper, the diet formulation is like an ongoing area of research for us. At the moment, we give them a diet that consists of extruded sort of pellets, mixed in with a little bit of squid from time to time, mussels, and all of this is of course also supplemented with minerals and vitamins. And the diet is changing throughout the year depending on their needs. And also our broodstock will get given a different type of diet, one that is really good for optimal egg production. Getting industry to invest in finfish aquaculture, I think that will result from us showing that it is possible to grow healthy fish um, and have a good supply of juveniles every year. This is something we have already established here. We can clearly generate um, a lot of juveniles, you know, hundreds of thousands um, every year. Um, and then we need to show them that it is commercially viable to do something like that. But I can just underscore that breeding is um, difficult, particularly of marine species. I mean, our snapper, they come directly from the wild. It's very different from working on terrestrial species that have been domesticated for hundreds and hundreds of years. So, and we are working with a huge diversity of species on the ocean. We've got around 30,000 species there. So there is no one handbook that fits all. There's no general breeding approach. We have to take it case by case at the moment. What we are hoping to do is to de-risk, work on new finfish species for the New Zealand industry and to take their feedback into account and then to inform our breeding program and develop and help them develop species that they need. <coughs>